What is going on trainers? Drumville here bringing you some more Pokemon Go PvP content and today we're talking about an Ultra Premier team. Now the Ultra Premier has not been here for a little while but if you're unfamiliar with the format it is all legendary and mythical Pokemon are banned. Other than that anything goes. So you're not going to be seeing Giratinas, you're not going to be seeing Cresselia, you're not going to be seeing Defense Form Deoxys, any of those legendary Pokemon Tapu Fini as well that really define the meta around them, especially in the Ultra League. Like, those legendary Pokemon really do determine what people are running, even if they're not running them themselves. So you're not going to be seeing those. The meta shifts a little bit to uh, let some other Pokemon shine that are otherwise uh, bulked out by those typings, like Giratina and Cresselia are quite a tough pair and do make quite a few Pokemon seem unviable in the Ultra League. But in Premier, they get a chance to do what they do best. Now, I tried running this team in two different orientations, and I do have one that I think is stronger than the other, and I'll talk about that in a little bit when we get round to the second orientation of the team. But let's just jump straight into looking at it. This way around, we've got Shadow Charizard on the lead. You can use regular Charizard if you want, but the Shadow is very strong. It hits like an absolute truck. It's a unit. That Blast Burn is going to absolutely ruin anything's day now. The Wing Attack and the Blast Burn are Legacy on Charizard. Only Dragon Claw is available without an Elite TM. So if you don't have a Charizard with Blast Burn and without Wing Attack, it's going to be two Elite TMs to build. That is quite expensive. You can run Skeledurge instead. If you don't have one, don't want to go for the Legacy moves. But the coverage does shift a little bit. Like The difference between Wing Attack and Incinerate makes a big difference in a handful of matchups. In the middle of this team, we're running Gallade. Gallade got access to Psycho Cut this season. That is a disgustingly fast energy generated move. You'll see it on Mewtwo in the Master League, making it an absolute unit. It's good on Cresselia as well. And on Gallade, it gives it a real good chance to shine because it has access to Leaf Blade and Close Combat. Those two moves are fantastic coverage in the current state. The Go Battle League Leaf Blade, there's so many water types around. There's Polyraths um, that are just... Absolutely everywhere. Close combat, a huge stab nuke that's going to do massive damage to anything that gets in the way. Fun fact, you can actually two-shot Charizard or Dragonite in the Ultra League with close combat from Gallade if, you, if they both go through, which is absolutely bananas. And then rounding out the line, we've got Comma O that got access to Brick Break this season, so you're not depending on that close combat nuke and debuffing yourself to have that extra coverage. Um, generally, we're going to be running Gallade as the say swap. Um in this orientation especially on the line and i think it does a pretty good job now this team really does synergize well in my opinion you've got charizard that's weak to electric which comma all covers it's also weak to water which Gallade and comma are going to do well against and then both Gallade and comma all don't want to see fairy types which you know like there's not that many fairies that i'm running into currently in the ultra league but charizard absolutely walls the fairy types which is absolutely fantastic on comma o like we're running brick break because new move and we're showcasing it but if you want to run close combat it can be effective as well to be honest like it's a very strong move and being able to hit pokemon for a ton of damage is very very useful so no shame on running close combat it's just that we're showcasing what brick break can do with it being new but all that being said and done let's take a look at some actual matchups now you saw from the first couple of matchups we're able to handle a swampert leader able to handle for alligator in the back like this team is very, very strong. Talonflame lead, you're going to want to stop in with Charizard. The main thing is you don't want to get Gallade near these things. The fire flying pairing is probably the biggest counter to Gallade. Also, Dragonite is very bad news for it in general. So, as long as you can keep it away from Gallade, you're not looking too bad. Both Charizard and Komoto are going to do just fine against Talonflame. They're both going to want to be shielding the flies or the brave birds. Um, but the incinerates are not going to be adding that pressure and building up over time the way that it does in a lot of matchups that really make Talonflame so powerful. We get an Ampharos say swap and we're able to punish that very effectively with the comma O. Almost no Ampharos are running Dragon Pulse, especially in the um in the Ultra Premiere as well. Like they're all running either Trailblaze or Thunder Punch as well as Brutal Swing. Generally goes for the being the move set and the odd ones running Focus Blast. And if they do build up to Focus Blast, maybe consider a shield. But if they don't, don't bother shielding, you'll be fine. Talonflame comes back in and Comma always putting in a ton of work here before getting taken out, which means we've got a whole Charizard and a Gallade to deal with whatever's going to be in the back and a shield advantage. Well, we're going to give up that shield advantage right here because this could be Fly, could hit it pretty hard, could be Brave Bird. It's absolutely no worries what's in the back. It's going to be a Greninja. And shields are down, yes, but the fact that this isn't 
a Shadow Gallade means we can survive these moves pretty comfortably. We actually overthrow a Psycho Cut, which means they get two Night Slashes through, um, which is could could be terrible. You know, like I said, if we were Shadow, those two Night Slashes would KO us, but we're not Shadow, so we're going to survive it. This is actually a Rank 1 Shiny Gallade that I have in the Ultra League, which I'm very, very happy to have. And like, it's very nice to flex Shinies in Go Battle League when you get the chance, but we're going to take the win very comfortably with Gallade able to ask one shot that Greninja and get it out of there. Right, on the lead in this matchup, we've got Skeletor Dirge. Once again, a really hard answer to Gallade. So seeing it here is absolutely perfect for us. Um, and honestly, one of the bigger problems I had with this lineup was, say, swapping Gallade in and being punished with Skeletor Dirge, with Talonflame, with Charizard, with Dragonite, because there's not much you can do. So there is an argument to take off, I would say take off close combat and give it um, Synchronize. I think it has access to Psychic. Like, give it one of those psychic charge moves, potentially, and then you've got something that can hit for strong neutral damage against the Charizards, against the Talon Flames, against the Dragon Knights, against the Skeletor Dirge. Um, they're going to stop in, throw a couple of charge moves, they get a shield out of us, but they're going to have to shield back. This is going to hit like an absolute truck if they don't, even though it's resisting. That Blast Burn is a monster of a charge move. It's going to absolutely ruin. If you've seen, like, Swampert's taking Blast Burn from Charizard in the Ultra League, you'll know it hits like a truck. So we're going to throw the move, get the shield out of them, swap into Coma O just to play this out. Yeah, they've got Aerial Ace. Yes, it's super effective. But what's happening here is we're going to get them low enough where then Charizard is going to be able to wing attack down and still have that energy advantage. All shields are down at this point. So Charizard with an energy advantage is super scary for almost anything. Polyrath comes in and I believe they catch, yeah, they catch a Blast Burn on Skeledurge, which is their only hope of winning this game. But we've still got Gallade here and we are going to be able to land at least one Leaf Blade and you can see that the wing attacks as well on that Polyrath were doing quite big chunks of damage again not at risk of being farmed down because we're not Shadow I do think that non-Shadow Gallade is better in this current state of the Ultra League because the matches where you need to land like a Leaf Blade you're probably not still gonna you would actually be able to take out Polyrath a lot easier with a Shadow Gallade but the Skull is much more threatening coming back at you and um a lot of the other matchups, you still want to land like a close combat, or you want to land two close combats or two leaf blades, and it doesn't really shift them too much being shadow, but it does make you feel a lot squishier. Okay, jumping into matchup number five, and we've got a purified scum tank on the lead. That's kind of spicy. I mean, I guess maybe it just didn't have the right IVs to be a shadow, but I do think that shadow scum tank is notably stronger in the Ultra League in general. But Scum Tank itself, no matter what, is still very strong because it's got that XL Pokemon bulk. Um, Poison Jab is very effective. It just trip blitzing through a ton of Pokemon. We should have a Trailblaze, which I'm kind of surprised by the bait, but also got on them for, you know, going for it because that would have been devastating if we'd have not shielded it. We're going to hit them with a Blast Burn, absolutely ruin the day, and we're going to get to a Blast Burn against this Escavalier as well. They're going to have to shield or get absolutely obliterated, being double weak to that fire. We do get the shield. And they're going to farm us down. That's no worries because Escavalier is probably not going to be able to one-shot Gallade. So even though they've got quite a bit of energy advantage here, we're going to let this go through and build up towards the close combat because it is neutral. And close combat, it's stab. Gallade's quite attack-weighted. This is going to hit like a truck, take Escavalier straight out of there. And now we've just got Comma O to deal with whatever's in the back. It's a Polyrath, so we can just put some work in here. We're not going to shield up Comma O at all. We preserve a shield to make sure we can get to a Leaf Blade on Gallade and just finish off this game. The opponent realizes what's happening and surrenders there. That's going to give us a 5-0 set with this orientation of the team. And that may, that may, yeah. it might not come as a surprise, but that means that this is the orientation of this team that I recommend. I did try swapping Comma O and Charizard around, and we're going to show you a set of those battles here. Starting with a Dragonite lead, which I'm quite happy to see because once again, it's one of those things that's going to punish Gallade very hard. So just having that match up here is much much better for us we're not going to throw we're just going to dragon tail all the way down because when they throw we get part of that dragon tail through gets us ahead on health and energy well not energy but then we get to just farm them down we've got the energy for the following matchup which is going to be a polyrath that comes in we're going to go straight for the brick break to debuff them we're not sure if we're going to get a shield out of this but we don't do we still get one dragon tail claw off we don't so maybe we were better off just throwing two dragon claws which i think we would have got if we're not throwing the Brit Brick, because Brit Brick is slightly more energy than Dragon Claw to throw. But we've got Empoleon, we've got Polyrath in the back on this team. 
both have to deal with this Gallade, and that is absolutely awful for this opponent here. So I'm just going to bring a Gallade go for this Leaf Blade here, and I think we might just make it to this close combat because we baited with Leaf Blade. No, they had one more wing attack to throw, so we might have been fine. Either way, this is going to absolutely ruin the Empoleon, and then we got Charizard in against the Polyrath, which, again, all we're doing is wing attacking, wing attacking, making sure they're in Leaf Blade range they have to throw at us here but we get to that leaf blade so fast we resist the counter sweeping with this small amount of health on Gallade. we're going to get there first we're going to take them out and we're going to take the win and this is this will go to show Gallade is such a dangerous sweeper with that move set it's so versatile and those close combat nukes are so useful so even though we had charizard in the back and we're dealing with double waters still able to take the win next matchup shadow snorlax is a pretty tough cookie to deal with in the ultra league in general just because it's it's just relentless lick damage, you know what I mean? Like, Gallade's going to have a tough time in there because the licks are going to shred it so fast, even though you're going to those close combats quick. They swap out into a Charmer, Shadow Gramble, and you are seeing how hard these Shadow Charms are hitting our Charizard. Like, they're going to fast move down our Shadow Charizard here before we actually take them out. Like, we're going to get the Dragon Claw, which gets a shield out of them. We're going to get to one more because we threw Blast Burn, first of all. Which I don't think is a bad idea, because if you throw a Dragon Claw and they let it through, that's a pretty devastating bait. Dragonite follows it in, which is great for us, because that means that we know that we've kept... Um, well, we know we kept Komodo away from this thing. We know that we've got some nice health on Gallade here to deal with the Snorlax. Like, we're going to shield this up, um, which, hit or miss, I think it was just to preserve the health to make sure we could still deal with the Dragonite, then we could close combat the Snorlax. We would get to a move against the Dragonite if they weren't fast enough and they'd have to throw them. We could definitely guarantee take them out with Komodo. So GG's. Okay, Clefable lead. Absolutely awful. Fairy is resisting everything Komodo can throw at him unless you're running Boom Burst or Flamethrower for God knows what reason. Like, they're both not good moves on Komodo. We swap to Gallade and we're going to throw the Leaf Blade. Then they dip out into an Annihilate. An Annihilate isn't the best answer to Gallade because you are resisting those counters, which again is really annihilates bread and butter is that relentless counter damage our leaf blades are super spammy they're neutral the psycho cuts are chipping away with little bits of super effective damage here and there as well so puts us in a bit of a better position to take switch advantage they throw a shadow ball which is absolutely fantastic for us we are going to throw after another five psycho cuts because we're worried if they throw like night slash and we we're pretty low at this point so we want to make sure we got switch advantage just because Comet O has such a bad time against Clefable. So they throw a Meteor Mash, take us out. We can now line up Charizard, which resists everything from Clefable. Resists the Meteor Mash, resists the Moon Blast, resists whatever else it might want to have. I don't know if it has access to anything that's not a Fairy type. Oh, it has access to Psychic, but no one's running Psychic on Clefable. In the Ultra League, then we've got Feraligator in the back. Is it running Ice Beam? It is running Ice Beam. They do just absolutely nuke it through us, and we're just going to go for a Dragon claw here which probably will get a shield because they're probably depending on Frolligate to, to clean up this match but think about that energy advantage we've got on our Charizard here and just watch how hard this blast burn hits bang Frolligate straight out of there and the opponent's going to surrender it's a GG so if we'd have thrown Dragon Claw and they'd let that through we'd have lost the game but getting that bit we're not not baiting and just annihilating them definitely the way to go Swampert lead you love to see it with Komodo we would have hated to see it with Charizard but like I said first matchup we did win against the Swampert lead, so it's not the end of the world. But come at all, you're just going to want to stop in. They're not even building up to Earthquake, so we're just going to keep chipping away with those Dragon Tails, throwing the Dragon Claws. We're not going to bother with Brick Break at this point. We're just going to go for the Dragon Claws because they're a little bit quicker, and we can just take them out more effectively. Because they've thrown Hydro Cannon here at this point, um, we can just farm them down entirely and come out with nearly two Dragon Claws loaded. So unless they come in with the Charmer and like Snipers down very quickly, we should get two Charge moves off here. Go Brit Brit first for lowering that defense. And then we're going to dip to Charizard. And the reason we do that is because Gallade has a strong match against Polyrath. Charizard looks good on paper, but is a bit tough because the Scold's so threatening. But if we drop the defense, they're so worried about taking extra wing attack fast move damage, they're going to dip out anyway. And then we know we can line up Gallade with the Polyrath at the end game, not let them get a chance to get too much energy, farming down Komodo. And we preserve a bit of energy there to potentially deal with whatever's stuck in the back as well so it very much puts us in a strong position for the end of the game we deal with the charizard very comfortably and we're getting a ton of lag here you saw that like we're trying to throw fast moves and it's just bugging us out not letting us throw 
we're getting some stuttering. We just want to throw these fast moves and wanted to really take down that Charizard a little bit quicker, but we had to give up a shield. It's not going to matter because we're going to get to two Leaf Blades here. One's going to go through, and yes, it's been debuffed, but also we still got a little bit of health and damage available on Comma O as well. So even if this doesn't quite knock them out, which it doesn't because Polyrath can be a little bulky, but it's going to catch on Comma O. Well, either catch or force them to throw, either way, and they are going to throw. Takes us out, we can just deal with them with Gallade, fast move them down, and then we can just throw a close combat into this Charizard to make sure that the job is done. So even a little bit of lag can't stop us here, costing us an extra shield and still taking the win. Now, this last matchup brings up one of the bigger issues that I've found with this orientation in particular, and that's flying damage. Flying is a core breaker because we're weak to flying on the lead and we're weak to flying in the back with Gallade. And that means that we're just going to be having to stay in here in this matchup, taking super effective wing attack damage, being very scared of uh, a brave bird. And we're just going to let this through. We're going to assume that they're going to go for feather dance because we're weak to it so that it's better to shield. They don't. They dip out into steel. Excuse me. Into Steelix. We're going to throw a Brit Brit. Yes, our attack is dropped by two stages, but it's going to soften them up just a little bit. Puts in a better position to just take them out here with Gallade. And I was expecting a breaking swipe and they actually throw Psychic Fangs. So a little bit outside the box for this Steelix. But that means we're going to let the second move go through as well, which might seem a little risky and maybe it is, but we're going to build up extra energy and then just throw a close combat here. If they let it through, it takes them out. We can throw another close combat at the Pidgeot when it follows them straight back in, which it does. This gives us a chance to get a shield out of them or probably knock out Pidgeot, to be honest. We do get the shield. Fantastic. They don't get too much farm. We've got shield advantage and we've got Charizard. So we're assuming this is going to be a feather dance, but it's getting a bit risky to know. Shield, if it's Brave Bird, we just lose the game. It is a feather dance. We swap to Comet O to immediately clear the debuff and we get farmed down by a Swampert and that is going to cement our loss because Swampert being ahead on energy is just going to ruin us with Hydro Cannons. Nothing we can do now. Um, maybe the win condition was maybe throw a Dragon Claw, see if they shielded, then clear the debuff, swap into Comet O, maybe they throw again, who knows. But if a situation, not too much we could do. And like I said, flying is a bit of a call breaker with that lineup. You've got Charizard on the lead, flying damage on lead, you're just stopping, you know, stopping against Gliscors against Pidgeots, against opposing Charizards. Um, also, I'm finding that when you run Comet O on lead, the leads that it loses tend to have something like Skeledurge in the back, or even like something like uh, Ampharos that gets lined up with Charizard. And I was finding the matchups a lot more punishing in general, so I definitely want to put Charizard on the lead is the lineup I would recommend on this team in particular. So that's the team, guys. Let me know if you've got any questions down below. I'll try and get back to you, and I'm going to try and make a video about some recommended teams for you guys to possibly try out over this weekend with the EUIC event happening um, that you can do extra battles every day. So rather than waiting for me to get like a video out with one team, I'm going to make a video talking about several that you can try out for yourself before the Ultra League comes in. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, hit the like button and I will catch all of you absolute legends next time.